Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people, today I want to share with you some very popular and lovely uh, Bible verses from the book of Prophet Ezekiel. I know it is one of those that is mostly known and maybe mostly talked about from the book of Prophet Ezekiel, that is after the chapter, chapter 7, yeah. No, after chapter 33. So we are in chapter 37, verses 1 to 12. The valley of dry bones. I felt the powerful presence. I'm, re I'm reading from the Good News Bible. I normally like to read from Jerusalem Bible. I don't know where it is. No, I have so many Bibles. I... I'm not bragging, but it is a fact. I have so many Bibles. I don't know how Jerusalem is. Uh, here is a nice Bible that I have. Eh? This is the Hebrew, English, Old Testament. And I have even others. Eh? But I like Jerusalem. I don't know where it is. My producer stole it. Anyway. <laughs> we are reading from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 1 to 12. I felt the powerful presence of the Lord. And his spirit took me and set me down in a valley where the ground was covered with bones. He led me all round the valley, and I could see that there were very many bones, and that they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal man, can these bones come back to life? I replied, Sovereign Lord, only you can answer that. He said, Prophesy to the bones. Tell these dry bones to listen to the word of the Lord. Tell them that I the Sovereign Lord, I am saying to them, I am going to put breath into you and bring you back to life. I will give you snews and muscles and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and bring you back to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been told while I was speaking. While I was speaking, I heard a rattling noise, and the bones began to join together while I watched. The bones were covered with snews and muscles and then with the skin, but there was no breath in the bones. God said to me, Mortal man, prophesy to the wind. Tell the wind that the sovereign Lord commands it to come from every direction to breathe into these dead bodies and to bring them back to life. So I prophesied, as I had been told, breath entered the bodies and they came to life and stood up. There were enough of them to form an army. God said to me, Mortal man, the people of Israel are like these bones. They say that they are dried up without any hope and with no future. So prophesy to my people, Israel, and tell them that I, the sovereign Lord, I am going to open their graves. I am going to take them out and bring them back to the land of Israel. When I open the graves where my people are buried and bring them out, 
They will know that I am the Lord. I will put my breath into them, bring them back to life, and let them live in their own land. Then they will know that I am the Lord. I have promised that I would do this, and I will. I, the Lord, have spoken the word of the Lord. Good people. From the prophet Isaiah, there's something that we are called to commit to our memory. Sometimes we talk about the hopelessness in our lives. Our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we have nothing to offer. Some people they would say, I am useless. Allow me to share with you an experience I had. I think I have shared with you in the past. Uh, I don't think there's any, any wrong if I, I'm able to, to share with you again. In a beautiful city of Zaragoza in Spain, I had gone there to meet some friends. So at dinner, we were seven priests. And one priest when he was giving his bio data, he talked about his health problems. And at some point, he referred to himself as a living dead. Because of the health problems he had, and some many organs had either been altered or replaced or were missing completely. So he was saying that, you know, I me, mean, I'm just like a living dead. I told him, Father, you can't be a living dead. Father, you are a walking miracle. You should be the reason, people should be pointing at you to see how God blesses people. Father did not see himself as a living miracle. He saw himself as a living dead. Sometimes we can be at the level where that priest was. You have been ravaged by the sickness to the extent that you find that there is nothing good in your system. Good people, it doesn't matter how dry your bones are. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. God will stand. But there's something that we need to know. When our situations are dry, when our bones are very dry, the Bible does not tell us that they were dry. It tells us that they were very dry. When your business is very dry, when your health is very dry, when your marriage is very dry, when everything is very dry, remember the following 11 things. Number one, you must know that the bones are dead and dry, but they can live. And they will live. Two things. Know that they are dry, very, but they can and they will live. Number two, you must learn to walk among the dead. Walk, learn to walk among the dead. Situations that are death-like. Do not run away from problems. They could be the rep the represented here like among the dead. The son of man was walking in the valley of dry bones among the dead. Do not run away from death-like situations. Do not run away from the dry bone situations. Number three, learn to proclaim God's word. I love this. This is what we call taking God at his word. What God says, he does. Number four, you must have almost a foolish confidence in God's word. A foolish confidence. As you know, you, 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 whatever you how you think about the word of God, your confidence is almost foolish. You are there holding it. Number five. You must understand that the spirit works in a, in a process. Restoration is always in the process because our God is the God of the process. Number six. You must recognize that the work of the Holy Spirit is essential. On Sunday, we talked about the servant led by the Spirit of God. 
We have so many spirits that guide the people. But we need to know that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is essential in our eventual restoration number seven. We must boldly pray for the Spirit to move. When you are facing the valley of dry bones in your family, the valley of dry bones in your marriage, please pray that uh, the Spirit moves to enliven your situation. Number eight, you must speak in the power of faith. Speak in the power of faith. On Monday, we read about the sick, paralyzed man in the book of Matthew. The four men who were lowering him from the tiles up the roof. And Jesus commented about their faith. They carried the paralytic because of their faith. He was healed. There comes a time, and this must be always, that when you speak, speak in the power of faith. Let it be said, as it was said by the, to the woman with the hemorrhage, your faith has healed thee. Your faith. Number eight. Number nine. You must, uh, you must notice every evidence of the work of the Spirit. When the Spirit works, there is evidence. Number 10, you must look for God's people to be revived and to an army of service. Um, that was when, I think on Wednesday, we talked about the lost. We have a duty to seek the lost. Let's make sure that we have a big army, a big army, by bringing them back. Those who are lost, we bring them back. The army, the army, even those we think that they, they are useless, they are useful before God. And finally, we must never allow our hope to get lost. There is no situation that is beyond the grace of God. The hand of God will reach every situation, however desperate, hopeless, or death-like it is. My dear friend, whatever is your situation, may the Spirit of God move in and change your situation. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. And make sure that you enjoy this Friday as we get ourselves ready for the weekend.